Aloha everybody, I am Eva Andrade and on this episode of the Triple F Podcast, the Triple F standing for Faith, Family and Freedom, my co-host Jim Hochberg and I are going to talk about how to make heads or tails of the government's left foot. So let's chat about that. Jim, one of the things that we saw recently was our um, recent Congresswoman, Tulsi Gabbard. And I, gotta, I just gotta say that one of the things I really appreciate about Tulsi is she just makes everybody mad because she speaks her heart and she's very passionate about what she believes. And she actually knows sometimes how to get to the heart of problems as she sees it. So I love that she does that. So I actually, she does a little bit more than what you described her Jim as. She always because, corrects what I say. No, because <laughs> she's really smart about it. She's not yeah. just passionate like the fellow that testifies at the legislature with his Bible standing up there no matter what the issue is saying, you go in hell! Yeah. You know, so you I mean, and, that's passionate, but I, it's not smart. And you and I get that all the time, right? Okay, you and Jim make, always tell us, you know, not to, you know, to be respectful, and yet we're going to say that. But she's very we're... smart about it. Yeah. That's the difference. Well, and we're going to say that until the cows come home, because you're going to catch more flies with well, if you're, Shug if what is it? You catch more honey, flies, honey, sugar, honey, than vinegar. Yes. So we're gonna continue. Because if you're in a church meeting and everybody agrees with you, you can say all that good stuff. But if you're at a legislative meeting where they don't share your values, that's not the way to get them to engage in a conversation. Well, she's been very reasonable. She's so very even, smart and very reasonable. Even when she was, you know, running for president while she was um, presenting herself, she always did it in a way that reached a lot of the people who were, you know, in the middle. And I think that that's what you need to do, especially here in the state of Hawaii. If you want to make a difference in politics, you're going to have to reach people in the middle. If you're too far right or you're too far left, I think you're going to lose people. And maybe, just maybe, that's what's happening across the nation right now right now is you have these two polar opposites coming so strong against each other that people are not finding a home and actually we're hearing that some Democrats do not feel like they're home anymore in the Democratic Party and even some Republicans feel like they're not home in the Republican Party and studies are showing that more and more Millennials and all of the the generation Y Z's and all that are coming after are actually more independent and I think that that's something we need to keep in mind as we're moving forward. But I want to go back to this interview that um, Tulsi Gabbard did on Fox News. She said, and I quote, the faith and trust that American people need to have in our leaders is dropping every day. The Department of Homeland Security Secretary recently told Congress our borders are secure. This is what he said. This kind of bold face lie whether it has to do with domestic issues or foreign policy issues and you know what i don't think tulsi is alone i think a lot of people feel like the government is lying to them it was on television i saw it i knew he was lying because i also see the other video about the border oh my god you know what this reminds it's me it's not of? secure what was that old saying that people used to say you know how i know you're lying your lips are moving? Yes. Yeah, so have we moved into that's how, it, how we feel about everybody? It shouldn't be, but you want to know something else. When I read this article, and, and two of the adjectives that she used, one of them was respect that you mentioned, and the other was faith that you mentioned, but she also said trust and respect. And you know what? That's what's on the back of HPD squad cars. Trust and respect, because it's necessary for us to be comfortable with the government exercising its power. A couple of shows ago, or maybe in the future, we're gonna talk about the FBI going after parents at school board meetings. That's not respecting, that's not trusting, that's not honoring their First Amendment rights. And her, what I really like about her position is it's just the truth, and you can't really argue with it. And if you argue with it, you're denying uh, reality. Yeah, well, I think the other thing we need to talk about in an upcoming show is we also need to talk about trust in journalism, because that's another thing that I think has been destroyed. I think people don't trust the media anymore, and I think we do need to talk about that. So let's, let's make, so, so the other make sure we get that on our And document. the other interesting thing, too, is when thinking about the media, if you ever watch anything that's produced, TV show, a movie, a newscast, a blog, video blog, anything that's produced 
if they did the job well, there is nothing contained in the recording that's not there for a reason. And the selection of each one of those items and the placement and the lighting and the colors, it's all intentional if they do it well. And so when I looked at this uh, Daily Wire news story about Tulsi Gabbard and I, I saw the, the photo of her that they used, it made me wonder if maybe it's not that flattering and they don't like her. Oh, that's a very important point to make because I noticed, and okay, and this is just my opinion, underline, underscore, italicize, every way to make it so that we, this is my opinion. During the election between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, I noticed that the pictures that were in a lot of these newspapers were Trump with the crazy hair askew, his face kind of red. He was always angry. Mm -hmm. and, and Joe Biden always looked so presidential, right? He always looked all put together. He looked calm. And, you know, let's be honest that some people are going to vote that way. I remember being in the, in the um, Capitol one time. And I remember that I was standing in the elevator with an elderly woman and she had made mention of who she was going to vote for. So I said to her, I was interested, so why are you going to vote for this person? And she said, oh, because he's good looking. All right. And I thought to myself, wow, have we really moved to where we're voting for people based on how they look or how they sound? Or who they went to high school or with? Who they, well, okay. okay. You know, I, in our trainings, and you've heard me say this, Go for it. that people in Hawaii, they vote for someone because they went to school with my broadest friends, cousins, niece, uncles, brada, and they graduated and got to you know, vote for them. Yep. Or how about, oh, the kind's been in office forever. You know what I'm saying? I got to vote for him. You know, you know and come, I mean, we're asking people to put all of this aside, knowing that we're from Hawaii and, you know, I'm a Hawaii girl, been here my whole life. Of course, I understand that, right? I understand that um, we have respect for police officers. We have respect for people in office. Even if we don't agree with them, we have respect for doctors. We have respect for teachers. That's what we're trained to do. Correct. So we want to make sure that everything we do is in that vein. And Tulsi does a good job she of does that. a very good job and when yes. I was reading yes. her the report of her conversation you know what I was directly reminded of no but I'm sure you're gonna tell me and and this actually kind of gave me a shudder because it's scary what she's describing is exactly how I felt for eight years during Barack Obama's presidency that's how his government was and that's how Biden's government is you're not alone in those feelings and what I hear when I'm out there is and I do have friends on both sides of who they supported for presidency okay so I, I have Democrat friends and I have Republican friends and I'll tell you it's very interesting because people see what they want to see in whoever it is they're supporting and um, I think that we have to train them to have good conversations ask questions drill down um, and maybe we can start making a dent right here in the state. So, okay, if we want people to vote for candidates that share Christian values, which is an ambiguous phrase these days because there's all over the map Christians claiming certain contradictory values, but if that would make the government better from my perspective, which I'm pretty sure it would, we can't just take the thing that comes in the mail from the candidate and just believe what's in there. Yes, we can because they're no. beautiful, Jim. They're shiny. What we, what we need to do is call them. Every single candidate's phone number is publicly available because they're a registered person to be a candidate. We need to call them and say, hey, I got your little thing in the mail. Thanks. You know, sound like but, a really nice guy, but I'm interested in this subject not what was on your thing can we chat about now and and let's be fair about this so sometimes when you do make these calls and because hawaii family forum we do a 501c3 centric voter guide where we do provide information and, and not all candidates respond to our survey right. um and so we do have feedback from people that and will you say, put their phone number on and we put, where they didn't respond right right 
So we've had people contact us and say, hey, I called the candidate. Um, let's, let's understand that sometimes, especially if you're asking a question about an issue that is really detailed and there's a lot of stuff going into that the candidate may say, you know what, I haven't had time to look into this issue. Let me get back to you. That's actually okay too. Now, if they say that for everything you ask them, then it's sus, right? I mean, then we need to be a little worried about it. But um, I think for the most part, a good candidate, if they can't speak to the issue, should say, you know what, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Let me do some research on it. So I had an easier way to talk to them. Instead of getting into the issues, because there are always obfuscationable parts to it, what I really want to know is what's their worldview. Because their worldview, if they're committed to it, will drive their decision making. What do we mean by worldview? How do they think they got here? What are they supposed to do while they're alive and what happens when they die? So, we're Christians. We believe that we were created because God created the heavens and the earth and everything therein throughout entire history. That we are basically sinners that need to be redeemed, and that's what we need to do while we're here. And when we die, if we are saved, we spend eternity in heaven. That's a worldview. I would vote for anybody that tells me that's their worldview, because chances are they're going to honor life, they're going to honor marriage, they're going to honor the building blocks of society, they're going to honor a lot of the things that our government doesn't do right now, which is giving us all these problems. Well, and I would take that a step further because I do believe there are some senos out there, Christians in name only. There are people no, there that, are. that know how to, to, to talk the talk, but when it comes to walk in the walk, they don't do it. And so right, just if, because somebody can speak the right language doesn't mean... But if you just people. rely on what they tell you in their little mailer, they don't address that. Exactly. And the other thing too is to keep in mind that there are good Jewish people there are good um, Islamic people that may not have a Christian worldview, but they may have um, a good worldview as well that might be a good office. So let's just throw that out there. I mean, we're okay. Christians and, and we would and love to have you know everybody. You're going to get very few Jewish and Muslim people running for office. There is Josh Green for governor. We know that. Um, and I actually don't really even know what most of the people that are in office. Um, my guess, based on their policies in Hawaii, they are probably progressives. And a progressive worldview would be, um, I'm an accident of biology. Um, basically, people are good, and so we need to find the best in everybody, and when we die, we just disappear. And that's a worldview that tells you something very important. And for me, I interpret that worldview to being they think utopia is possible on Earth, and therefore they will exercise their political power to try to make it happen. But I actually know that it's not, because human beings are essentially sinners that need to be redeemed, well, the, not good. Yeah, and the bottom line is that people should be having this conversation they with should. people running for office. So, the, you know, where whoever's watching this, you, the, it could be someone from New York, it could be someone from Nebraska, it could be someone internationally. I, I had somebody reach out to me from Ireland, which I thought was kind of cool, that saw one of our early podcasts. So I, it doesn't matter where you are. The point is that when somebody's running for office and they want to be your leader, make sure you know where their heart is. Yes. You know, because their heart is how they're going to legislate. And that's what we're trying to say. Um, one of the things I do want to um, talk about too, Jim, as we're dealing with some of the things that have happened recently, is you and I did a podcast very recently about these COVID, um, the vaccination mandates for school children. Correct. And you and I, we, we spent some time. Um, I tried to provide links. Um, on the YouTube episodes that people could know what we were referring to. And in the process of that, something very interesting happened. And I think people need to, to know about this. So you were quoting some things you had found on the Department of Education website. Yeah, I actually printed out the page. It's called Request for Exemption from COVID-19 Vaccination Requirements for Student Participation in Athletics on Religious Grounds. And we went over this piece of paper and then you wanted me to send you the link so you could put it on the screen and I could not find this document. We found a different version of it on the Pahoa High School website and I think that's the link that we used. 
But it's very interesting when that's the trust and respect issue that Tulsi's talking about. Why would it disappear? It's actually got Civil Rights Compliance Branch September of 2021. It's not been around very long. I guess they decided they didn't like it and they made it disappear. Yeah, and because I'm so um, determined to make sure that we're putting out accurate information that I kind of harassed you about you that because I'm and like, I spent a lot I'm of like time Jim, to where find is it? this document? You're telling me it's there and I was looking for it and I couldn't find it. But what was interesting is on the Pahoa High School website where we found a form, it was different than that. It had some of the same... Um, it was version. the same words, but it was in a different format with lines and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so it was kind of interesting. Um, so what I'd like to find out then is where are these forms available and how can people get them? Um, is it coming through the school? Do, do parents need to reach out to the school to get this information? And is that how these forms are getting out? Um, it seems to me that the form should be on the Department of Education website. There should be one there form there should be that one should be the form same. That should be the same because it seems odd to me that there would be two different forms out there. Even though the verbiage, especially on what you were reading out, which was the criteria, that was the same. Yeah. But it looked like on the Pahoa High School website with the link it was a little bit more detailed some of the information that they had on there so it's very interesting but the point we're trying to make here is that sometimes links can suddenly disappear yeah and um which is bad that For is the government to do is that, very bad well yes and let's talk about another interesting thing that we found out as we've been doing these podcasts so another podcast we did was you were explaining to people how to file a complaint with the hawaii civil rights commission on two different shows, on one having to do with uh, discrimination at work and one having to do with discrimination in a public accommodation like a restaurant. Yeah. They were two totally different. So again, I went to the Hawaii Civil Rights website so that I could pull up this information you were talking about and I found a memo from the Civil Rights Commission where they were saying that they cannot, it's not in their jurisdiction to make any um, they don't get involved on the issue of vaccinations or not. And you were kind of upset about that. I was. I have it right here. <laughs> what, what they did is they published the answer to a question that they made up because they wanted to put this version of the information out there. And the question they asked is, can an employer mandate or require employees to get a COVID-19 vaccination? So I think they were getting some requests for uh, punishment of employers that were not giving religious exemptions, I think, which is what we were suggesting people do. So to fight everybody at once, they came up with this. <laughs> and basically what they're saying is the state fair employment law prohibits discrimination based on race, sex, including gender identity or expression, sexual orientation, age, religion, color, ancestry, disability, marital status, arrest and court record, reproductive health decisions, or domestic or sexual violence victim status. A vaccination requirement is a safety-based standard that does not on its face discriminate on any of these protected bases. So the Hawaii Civil Rights Commission does not have jurisdiction over these complaints. Now, interesting, the statute that creates the Civil Rights Commission, the first thing it says is, they have to stamp out discrimination on these categories, which includes religion. The second thing says this obligation of theirs must be liberally construed to affect that purpose. What that means is they have to bend over backwards to protect people from the discrimination at work that's not permitted by the statute, including religion. And they're not doing that. What they're doing is punting. They're saying, we don't want to have to get in the middle of this question, so we're going to claim it's a safety issue, it's not a religious discrimination issue. And I say to everybody out there, file complaint after complaint after complaint. Have some fun. When they give you a letter saying that your complaint about employment discrimination based on religion because you were denied a religious exemption to the COVID vax requirement, Tell them that file another complaint against the division, against the Civil Rights Commission, saying that they're now violating their own obligations under their statute. That could be fun. Now, and I hate to say we were prophetic, 
But did we not say in several of our podcasts that this was not going to be an easy process? You know, people thought by just getting one of those exemption forms off of the internet or from their pastor meant easy peasy breezy right. right and you and i that's why we made the first podcast that we did we had to Correct. explain to people that don't just pull an exemption form off the internet and think you know and, and use it first of all because you have to defend it Correct, and if you haven't seen that, you need to watch that video. Absolutely, um, we've gotten so a we lot got of So we got one more thing before we run out of time. Yes. Because we saw the Civil Rights Commission try to punt on discrimination in the workplace when you're denied a religious exemption on the COVID requirement. So we've also encouraged people to file complaints if, uh, to, and, and to tell restaurants that they can't discriminate against you based on your religion because that's also part of the Civil Rights Commission's jurisdiction. And so I'm expecting them to take this position that COVID is a safety, not a discrimination thing with respect to the restaurant. And it's a good thing you printed it up because it may disappear. Yes. So on March 14th, 2018, which isn't too long ago, the state of Hawaii, Hawaii Civil Rights Commission published a news release because they won an intermediate court of appeals decision in one of my cases that I asked the state Supreme Court and the United States Supreme Court to review, and they both said no. So this was the final decision. Here's, here's the headline. Intermediate court of appeals issues a decision affirming that businesses cannot discriminate based on religious beliefs. How about that? So when they tell you COVID's not a religious discrimination, you can go to their website unless they pull this down. There is a, uh, we'll put a link up as long as it works. And this news press release is there on February 23rd, 2018, the Hawaii Intermediate Court of Appeals affirmed a lower court summary judgment decision against Aloha Bed and Breakfast, which was my client, which denied a room to a vacationing lesbian couple because of their sexual orientation. The bed and breakfast owner claimed a religious basis for the discriminatory action footnote because she lived in the house and federal and state law says if you live in the house and you rent fewer than five rooms you're not required to abide by the non-discrimination provisions well our intermediate court of appeals said that might be true but she was renting for less than 30 days so we're going to say she's a hotel which is dumb because by law hotels have to be open for business 24 7 they have to have a front desk this was in her home anyway so we do know that businesses, restaurants, theaters cannot discriminate based on religious beliefs. So we want to take this to the Civil Rights Commission when they tell us it's not in their jurisdiction and show them, oh yeah, you told us in 2018 that it was when you were tooting the horn of your win. Now, what's interesting, and before we start wrapping up, is you had a conversation with someone from the Civil Rights Commission, and what, well, how did that okay, conversation so go? Because you and I have been doing this for so long. I've been an attorney in Hawaii since 1984. That's 37 years? No. I don't... I, I think that's 37 years. Anyway, so I've run across people that have been doing stuff in Hawaii all this time. Bill Hosejo, who is the executive director of the Hawaii Civil Rights Commission, has been there for at least 10 years. Um, I don't even remember who the person was in that position before him. Anyway, so we shop at the same food land farms because we live in the same valley, and I see him from time to time, and I'm very polite, and we chat, and we're nice to each other, even though he thinks religious exemptions are not discrimination issues, they're safety issues, and I obviously think they're discrimination issues. So I asked him about how many complaints they were getting on the things that we had in our podcast, the employment discrimination on COVID and the public accommodation restaurant one. And he, he got kind of quiet and, and said, well, he knows there's been at least one because one came by his desk which is kind of an interesting way to answer the question. He didn't say there's only one I saw it. At least. He says there's at least one, which means I think you guys are doing a good job. Keep it up. <laughs> okay, but what did he say? Because uh, there was, he didn't know so about he, the memo. He said that they were going to do what's called an advisory opinion on the issue. 
so that they didn't have to do the cases. And I'm guessing that this question answer little memo thing is their version of what he was telling me they were gonna do, which in my opinion holds no water at all. And uh, if you get that answer, don't accept it. Well, we need to wrap up as we always do. We run out of time. Um, but I know that some people may be watching right now going, wait a second, they're not doing a Zoom meeting. No. We're not doing a Zoom. No, we're not. We graduated. We, we graduated. We are in a new place. Um, for those of you watching are like, wait, what? Yes, we are in um, Mapuna Puna right now in obviously Very in the state of Hawaii. Um, yes, in a place called The Space. And we've got a great team behind the camera right now from Called Presentations who's, um, they decided to take us out of our Zoom cubby holes. And so we appreciate them for stepping up and, and bringing us to the next level. So shout out to the guys and gal behind the camera that's making this happen. We appreciate that. So make sure if you're in Mapuna Puna, you give a shout out to the right guys. Right next to LNL, easy So go to LNL for dinner or lunch or whatever and stop by and say hi to the guys. Um, but in the meantime, you want to stick around for the upcoming episodes because we're going to be talking about the FBI. Um, and spying on parents. And Jim and I are going to take a little stab at journalism. So make sure you stay connected to us. So like this video, share it with your friends, make sure you subscribe to the Hawaii Family Forum YouTube channel, and make sure you hit that notification button so you know when a new episode is uploaded. And as Jim always says, comment, comment, comment. Because if there's something you're interested in, put it in the comment. We might look into it and do a show. You never yep. know. To learn more about Hawaii Family Forum, go to hawaiifamilyforum.org, and we will see you next time. Mahalo, everybody. Aloha.